This is the 2021 Audi RS7. It's a second generation of this vehicle, but this vehicle has improved performance, design, and handling. But is it the best in the category? We're gonna find out. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix. If this is your first time to Car Coach Reports, we do a lot more than just cool car reviews. We give you first looks of new vehicles as they come out, and we give you car smarts because we believe knowledge is power. Make sure to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything. This is the 2021 Audi RS7. I'll admit, I am a huge fan of this car, especially in my favorite color, Nardo Gray. I've always been a huge fan of this color and it's sort of a German color you don't really see on domestic cars. They're trying, but there's something special about this color. And not just that, this vehicle is very special. If you have driven the previous RS7, which we have, and I have a couple friends that have owned them, they're really spectacular cars. But this 2021 vehicle is a whole step beyond. It not just has more performance, it has better handling, better technology, of course, because technology is always improving, but this vehicle has a lot more to offer. But this 2021 Audi RS7 competes with BMW, Mercedes, and a few other vehicles. We're gonna test this vehicle in 10 different categories and give you a car coach reports total, because when you go to the dealer, they're gonna try and sell you this vehicle. That's their job. We're gonna give you information so when you walk in, you're empowered and you know what vehicle you actually want. We're gonna handle performance, handling, safety, visibility, Seating, technology, features, quality, design, value, and we'll also cover cargo space. We'll talk about quality, and in the end, we'll give you a car coach reports total. I'm very excited to take this vehicle for a drive. Under the hood is a four liter V8 engine with twin turbos, which gives us 591 horsepower, 590 pound feet of torque. Yeah, it's a beast. Zero to 63.5 seconds, top speed 190 miles an hour, which I hope you do on a track. Please don't do that on the street. Backed up with an eight speed automatic transmission with Tiptronic. And yes, we are gonna do a launch with this vehicle, even in the snow. There are three different standard drive modes. First is obviously your sport, your comfort, and your economy. But there is an RS button right here on the steering wheel. And that RS button, you press it once, you get RS1. And that's a performance mode. Then you have RS2, which shuts off all of the safety and nannies that are on this car. It shuts off the Audi presets. It shuts off the traction control. It makes you be the driver. Zero to 63.5 seconds in RS2. Yes. Oh my God. This is awesome. Sounds good. Takes off. We'll do that again in the different drive mode of RS1 because I want you to see the difference between the two. RS1. Nice. And I love the gauges in front of you. They also match the gauges in the head up display. That's really important as well. Number one, the exhaust system is awesome. Yes, I would pay an extra thousand dollars for this sport exhaust. It sounds awesome. Now we're just in RS1 now, and if we do an additional launch in the different drive modes, you can see obviously it slows down. RS2 is the one to have, not for the winter, but right now our roads are dry until the snowstorm comes in. We'll also be driving this through the snow as this vehicle has snow tires on it. So you're not gonna get that same traction that you would get with an all season during the summer because there's a 40 degree rule. Below 40 degrees, those performance tires become hockey pucks. And that's part of handling. We'll talk about that in a second, which is why you want winter tires if you drive this through the winter. Now, one of the performance things you might want to know is the fuel economy on this car combined is 17 miles to the gallon. You don't buy a car like this for fuel economy, but it does get pretty good fuel economy considering pretty equivalent to the competitors in the category. When you're looking at the performance of this vehicle, which includes the paddle shifters, they did a really nice job getting a good balance. There isn't a delay like there typically is with a lot of turbochargers. You put your foot in it, it's very small. Every turbocharger is going to have turbo lag. That's what it's called. Very little in this car. They did a really nice job. And when it comes to performance, it earns a nine. Handling on the RS7 has one thing that really takes the cake and that is Quattro. Audi was the developer of all this Quattro technology, which means all four wheels are driven, but it also means that this vehicle handles really, really well in all conditions. This vehicle has adaptive air suspension with controlled handling. What that really means to you is that this vehicle 
will adapt to the different roadways. Now I currently have it in RS2. We're gonna change that now to comfort mode. And we're gonna see how nice and comfortable this vehicle is. Look how quiet it gets. Very nice and quiet. Comfort wise, it does absorb some of the potholes. We have really crappy roads here in New York. I know, I hear it from you all the time. You can't complain about the roadways. They're, they're not great everywhere across the country. So at least we're aware of that. As you go into each drive mode, you'll see that there's a difference in the steering, in the handling, in the exhaust note, in the shift points, in every single aspect. And that's what really makes a difference. All the German cars are really good at doing that. So every car is gonna be different. You have to drive it in the different modes. You may not use all those modes all the time. You may never use the eco or the race mode, but if you choose to have a mixture of usage for your driving pleasure, as they would say in the advertising world, you should always make sure that you test everything out. One of the other things I always recommend is trying to do a U-turn or pull into a, an area where you have a tight turning radius. This has a nice tight turning radius. And that is important for getting into parking spots that you never think about until you try to get into a parking spot and you've got to jockey the vehicle around. That makes it no fun to drive. Note that when you use that RS drive button that's right here on the steering wheel, when you press that, it goes right into the performance driving modes. It does change everything. It takes off a lot of the safety features that are there to keep you safer on the road. You don't want those on in the track. As a matter of fact, a lot of track events, if you decide to put this on the track, will not allow you to drive it in any other mode because that forward collision warning, if you get close to another car, will slam on the brakes and that will cause a problem. So if you're going to put this on the track, you should at least be aware of that. One of the really nice features of this vehicle is it has dynamic all wheel drive steering, which gives you really great handling and makes you feel like a more confident driver no matter what mode you're in. And when it comes to braking on this vehicle, ready? That's freaking amazing. Mind you, these are ceramic brakes and this was a $9,000 option, $500 for the colored brakes, or you can just go with the everyday brakes that come with it. I'm sure they're excellent, but remember ceramic brakes do need to be warmed up if you're gonna put it on a track. And they're very, very expensive when it comes to replacing a rotor and a set of pads. I've been there and done that. I hate the auto off on this vehicle. I know it's there to save a tablespoon of gasoline, I shut it off. If I could program it to be off all the time, I would. Our test vehicle has 22 inch wheels, 21 are standard. I'll discuss that briefly as well in design. When you're looking at handling overall for this Quattro, and it is one of the best on the marketplace, it earns a nine. When it comes to safety, Audi has always been known to have very safe cars. They have all the Audi pre-sense system. So what that is, is forward collision warning, active cruise control. It even has an optional safety package on this vehicle. It's about $6,600. When you back up, if there's something there, it'll stop the vehicle. Now, other vehicles that are less expensive also have that available, but this also has the exit on the sides. So if you want to get out the back seat and something's coming, it'll give you a warning. There's a lot of safety features that are on this vehicle. One of the things that's important on all these German vehicles is they charge you for safety. They charge you up for safety. And what does that mean? You get the standard safety. It's good, but you want all these additional goodies for backing up, around view camera, all the cool little features that you get. That can get very expensive and it adds up because you're layering it now. So when you start to add up the different safety on top of the safety that is fabulous. And the Germans are always on top of it. Like I said, they're the benchmark for safety. Although the Volvo is probably the, the benchmark, this is still a really safe vehicle. It has a lot of great safety features. For safety, it earns a nine. When it comes to visibility, this is a part of safety. Now you may not think about that, but 80% of your driving decisions are based on visibility. So this is what you see as the driver. Looking out the front, you have a huge piece of glass and you can see the roadway, although it's a little bit limited because of the size of the vehicle and that's to be expected. Looking at the sills, this is where your arm would rest if you put your arm up on the sill. It's a little high, but that's what gives it that cool look and also gives it that safer feeling. But you have to remember those that are sitting in the car wanna look out the window too. And so it does limit 
some of the glass, so some of the greenhouses, just where you are, so your visibility is a bit limited. When you're looking at visibility out the back, you can see that when I move my head out of the way, that there's a headrest in the way and a center headrest because this vehicle does seat five, and that makes it a little limited. Also, this is a sloped back, a coupe style, which is going to automatically limit some of the visibility. Yes, there is an around view camera and a backup camera. That's required by law, at least the backup camera is. When you're looking at visibility overall for this vehicle, it earns an eight. When it comes to seating, one of the most important things is adjustable height seat belts because this is where you sit and you need to be comfortable. And the last thing you want is a seat belt cutting you in the neck. This does have adjustable height seat belts. And that's good. And it's also part of the setting when you use the memory seats, it will save that. Not every vehicle has that. Sometimes that's manual. The seats themselves are RS sport buckets. I have to say they're really nice. There is red stitching on these seats. That is an additional fee. So keep that in mind that you can add these things up really quickly. How badly do you want the red stitching? It does look cool, I have to admit. Now, in addition to that, you've got lumbar that's four-way adjustable, and the seat has its normal adjustments. This particular test vehicle doesn't have massaging seats. And again, you can pretty much get anything you want in these vehicles, but then it jacks up the price. Our test vehicle has heated and ventilated seats, which I think is important because Wherever you live in the country, no one wants to have cold bottoms or too warm bottoms. So therefore, heated and air-cooled seats are great. In the second row, there are heated seats. We'll check that out in just a second. When you're looking at seating overall, the comfort for multiple body shapes and sizes are really important, and they have done a great job with that. Heading back into the second row, there is a lot of leg and foot room for underneath the seat. Not every vehicle has that. And I'm 5'8", and there's some really good head space. I know others that are six feet tall have sat back here and said there's not a problem. That's great. This vehicle is designed for three people in the back seat. So this armrest does come down. It also has a pass-through, which is important. So the seats are 40, 20, 40, and the seats do fold down individually as you would need them. That's great, especially if you've got skis. Because remember, that's a lot of what they do. This is their new designed cup holder. Thank you for not making these cheap plastic things that come out. It now opens like a clamshell. It's very nicely designed. And so they're thinking about sitting in the back seat and what it's like. There's also Bang & Olufsen audio throughout the whole car. We'll talk about that in features, but it does have speakers back here. And I like that. Also behind the center console is four-way climate control. So each corner gets their own setting as far as temperature. And there's also a vent here on the B pillar, which I really like as well. And you just slide your finger up and down for the heat or for the fan. And of course, they're heated seats as well. Two USB connections and one 12 volt connection and two vents. On the back of the seats are netting, part of the design that they've always had. But this is a lot of room back here. And when it comes to seating, it earns a nine. This is the RS button. You press it once to get from comp you get from your main screen that gets you to RS1. Changes the gauges. Press it again. You get RS2. Note it shuts off all of the safety features. It'll give you a note that you're not just losing the stability control. You're losing that Audi pre-sense, which is part of those safety features that you would want off. Now you can also change some of these gauges, which is important. And this is part of technology. And it's also part of performance because you do want to know that. I think that's really important. Now you can change the view on this to be your normal view or your S view. I think that's cool. And you can change the information. If you say, I don't want that. I want to know this information. It'll give it to you. Now there's limited information in this drive mode because it obviously they want you to use it for different things. You go back to the comfort mode. And now it's going to put everything back on. Your stability control, there you go. Everything's back on. And you can see as you change, now you can change to consumption. Of course, we've been letting it idle. You get your tire pressure on the side. And you can change all that. You can also change the view, say. And you can change from the top to your audio system, your phone if it's connected, your navigation. This is my favorite. This is the best system on the market. This is called virtual cockpit. That's your standard head-up display. When you change it to RS, you get that. You press it again, you get RS2. And that goes back to the comfort mode, your normal mode. And you can change your drive select, which will change the head-up display depending upon what you touch. Cool technology. Technology in the RS7 is best seen at night. The illumination is just spectacular. 
Just look at some of this lighting. Isn't that cool? You really see it at night. It runs all along the perimeter, although it's really not technology, as I usually call it technology. But I want to show you the center screen, and it's always best to see this at night. So you, this is your radio, and you can touch it, and it senses it, but you actually have to push it. It's a haptic, so it's good to note that. And then, of course, you got your home button. Now, there's multiple ways to get there. There's all kinds of buttons. This upper screen of these two screens are both part of technology. Now, this is for your regular media. This is a Bang & Olufsen system, B&O, really top, really premium. Let's see if we can get some audio here. This is Symphony real quick. Because of ASCAP, I can't leave it on. This is the 3D audio system. It is top of the line, uh, and it really does. It's so well balanced. Uh, you can connect your phone up through here, and then you've got your navigation. We'll get to that in a second. Your settings, your favorites, the vehicle, and the phone app. So when you press the, the vehicle itself, and you have to actually press it, you get the Audi Drive Select, which allows you to go to Comfort and Auto Dynamic. And then you got that RS1 and that RS2 that I was talking about, and you can it says it shows you the height of the vehicle, just so you can see that it says raise or lower. Kind of neat. You can go back here, or there's other ways to go back, but this is the main way of heading back. Now, you've also got your lighting and your visibility. This is on that second screen. You can check the exterior, the interior, rain sensors, a lot of cool stuff on that as well. This is all under choosing about your vehicle. You've got your RS monitor. This is neat because this shows you the performance and how the performance heats is overheating, hot, warm. Let's hope you're not in the overheating stage. You got your coolant, your engine oil, your brake rotors, your transmission fluid, your sport differential. Most people don't go over all this. I think this is important if you're buying a car like this, especially if you're going to use it on the track, track event, Audi club, whatever that might be, all these dr performance driving events. You get your G meter here as well. Kind of neat to have all that. Depends how much you like your parking aids, your driver assist, your seats. All this stuff is part of what you need for entry assist. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. So you've got all your different settings here. I'm not into the efficiency, but if you want to see the efficiency assist, it'll tell you that you're driving like a good little boy or girl or whatever you want to call yourself. And then as far as going to my favorite setting, this is my favorite of all. This is the navigation. Now, why is navigation my favorite? Because this navigation system is spectacular. You can not just see it in front of you in the gauges, and I'll show you in a minute, but what you're also getting is the best system on the marketplace. Now, if you want to do a destination, right? So you put this in, you press search, you can put it in there, but look what happens. Your lower screen now turns into a keyboard, the QWERTY keyboard. Or if you prefer to use this, you can just do this. It knows it's an S. S. See? And say, why? We're going to do Syracuse. Why? R. It's a little long for me. I, I would rather do it the old fashioned way, but that gives you some ideas. So you have a choice of keyboards. Again, this is the whole thing up close and personal. And you can, of course, add your traffic in there if you want, but you've got all that type of thing. Now, beyond the audio system and all that, now, this is the cool thing. When you go to the lower screen, this can be a lot of things. It depends how you set it up. So, right now, I got the heated seats on because it's freezing outside. You've got air cooled seats, you can have air conditioned heated steering wheel, which I'm going to shut off. And you can do this. You press this button beyond the obvious, look what happens. The functions are now here. So you get the heated steering wheel, the rear heat, and so forth. So you can say, oh, yeah, let's turn on the, the rear section. So you can adjust that in back. So that's something that you can rear mode exit. See, it's got a child safety lock on it. I noticed that when I was back there, I got trapped. Um, but as far as all the different settings, that's all right here. Now, you can press this button here. That'll give you your home address and your favorites. So that button here gives you your favorites. That's for your home link, which used to be in the mirror, and that's for programming your garage door opener. Kind of neat. Nice to know that you have it. No, we're going to do that later. This is not my car, although I wouldn't mind having it. That's for putting the wing up, and I like the wing up all the time. I wish it was up all the time. I, it just doesn't do it, stay there. So that's kind of neat. So that's all under that button right there. So further down, you can look and you can press these buttons and play around and get the different, whatever you want. You got to make it your own. So that's kind of neat from that perspective. All right, now other things. You go back to your home button here and beyond your normal settings and your favorites, you can slide it this way and you can do help, users, messages, your purchases, your legal notes. I don't want to waste my time with that. Well, right now it says it's 35. I don't believe that because I know better, but whatever. Either way, it's showing you the different things. You get your news. And then you can slide it this way and then get the three major things that you typically use. Again, you choose what you want. They do a really nice job on this. When you're looking at technology overall, 
I'm always impressed with this and it deserves a 10. When you're looking at features in this vehicle, there is just so much in this very cool Audi. Let me turn on the light in here. I like to do this at night because I want you to see everything. There is the RS logo and you can see the steering wheel and your normal RS buttons here, your volume. These are pretty normal. If you've driven an Audi before, you get it. Let me shut this light up. I want to show you something. One thing you don't have in most vehicles is the lit stock. The stock is lit, which is really, really cool. And when you're looking at the gauges that are in front of you, there's different modes. You can press the RS mode one, RS mode two, which shuts everything off. And that goes back to your regular mode. Now these are neat because it allows you to like play around. Now, because we want to see all the different modes, when you press this button and you go into the comfort mode, what happens is it not just gets quieter, but you can change the view in front of you. Some of the other details, I love the LED lighting. It's all around the vehicle. Things are lit up the way you need them to be to give you information that you would like. Of course, the steering wheel is lit. That's pretty normal these days, not something unusual. But I really like all the different features. Now, going further down, I had to turn on the light here because it is at night. I really love this at night. The details are fabulous, and you can see pictures of it during the day as well. But what really is neat is when you look at the details and the big glass roof and a lot of the details that people don't think about, like when you open the door, you see RS7. The Audi Sport is projected from the puddle lamp. I think it's just a nice little touch. And when it comes to features, this vehicle has a lot. It's missing a few things, but the quality of the material are just spectacular from the seats to the stitching to the details. Really, really impressive, and it earns a nine. When you're looking at the design of this vehicle, there is a lot of very muscular features, very athletic, as they might say, starting with the blacked out RS7 logo. I think that's cool. It's part of the package that we ordered that blacks everything out. In addition, you've got vents here that are functional for your cooling ducts. Vents, of course, functional all the way around and the blacked out Audi logo. Really love that look. Very muscular hood. Now I have to show you something. This RS key fob, when you touch it, like to unlock the car, this signature lighting is brilliant. Love it. It goes different colors. And it's not just in the front, it's in the back, and we'll show you that as well. Love the splitter in front. It's a carbon splitter, very muscular, very race looking. And I love the lines on the hood as well. Very muscular, showing its strength in the category. Standard is 21 inch wheels. We have the optional 22 inch wheels. Also note that the standard brakes are not a color. These are the red brakes, which are an additional $500, or you can go to the carbon brakes, which this vehicle has, and it's an extra $9,000. But you do get woe power, and that's really what these brakes are about. Love the alloy wheels, really cool design. Audi's always been known for their very unique, very artsy looking wheels. And I love how it fills up the whole wheelhouse too. When you're looking at a performance sports coupe, that's something that really makes a difference. As you move back from these very muscular fenders, you'll note this carbon trim piece here. I really like it. And I think if you order black, you're going to miss that carbon. So if you're thinking about this color combination or whether it be the red or whatever else we're showing, remember that this carbon is only going to stand out in the non-black colors. Also note the carbon caps on the side view mirrors. And when you open the door, there is a little light that comes down a puddle lamp that says Audi Sport just to remind you that you're driving an RS trim level. And I have an Audi RS5 behind me in the garage. I'm a huge Audi fan, full disclosure. As you move your way back, you'll see that this four-door vehicle has done a really nice job of looking more muscular, not so in your face large, like a lot of luxury vehicles are. And then you move your way back to these really nice muscular fenders. As you walk up to the vehicle, it does know who you are, but I love this LED signature lighting. And it just, especially when you walk up to it in total darkness, it gives you this whole welcoming sort of message. Here is a wing that can go up at high speeds. I kind of wish it was up all the time. Uh, my daughter has a TTRS and it's up all the time. And I think that's a really important part of showing that muscular look all the time. But if you're looking for a luxury look, it sort of hides away. It doesn't let anyone know that you have that luxury and performance mix. The sport back does limit some of the vision. We talked about that in visibility, but when you're looking at something I really love, 
this splitter in the back. Really cool. All carbon and the thousand dollar additional sport exhaust. I think it makes a huge difference. Love the blacked out RS logo and it's just so clean. It's not giving you too much information, but if you know what you're looking at and you pull up behind this thing in a traffic light, you know somebody invested in a really cool car. When it comes to design, this vehicle earns a nine. When it comes to quality, BMW, Mercedes, and Audi are pretty equivalent. They have great quality build and they are the benchmark for other brands. Now this vehicle is much better looking than its previous generation. Not just the quality of the materials on the exterior, which includes the paint quality, the fit and finish and all the materials. There's a few things that are lacking in minor areas. Nothing that would throw a flag and say, oh, don't buy it. This vehicle is very equivalent to its competition. It also offers a four year, 50,000 mile warranty. Roadside is also included, of course, pretty standard for most vehicles these days, all different lengths. So make sure to read all that small print. In addition, there's a 12 year rust through protection. Really good quality, both inside and out, premium materials. When they say it's carbon, it's carbon. It's not a picture of carbon. And when it comes to quality, it earns a nine. In the trunk, we have 30 cubic feet of storage. That's a lot. Remember, this is a coupe design, and you can put these seats down 40, 20, or 40, and the center's great, especially if you got skis or something long you want to take home. This is a pretty good sized trunk. When it comes to value of a vehicle in this price category, the starting price is $114,000, but you want to add some of the goodies, the nicer wheels, the better interior components. And when you start adding all that safety up, you look at a vehicle like ours. Our test vehicle came in at $137,000. Actually, it's a pretty good price compared to the BMW, the Mercedes, and even the Porsche Panamera. Although it's really not the same vehicle, it is in this category, and it is a cross shopped item. And we've reviewed all of those. The link is down below next to each description under competitors, which is slightly below the description before the chapters, and you wanna check that out. When you look at the value of this vehicle, for all the components that are inside, and the price and how things add up like they do in all German cars, it got a value score of nine. I've always been a huge Audi fan. I do own an Audi RS5. It's an older one, full disclosure. It does have a V8 engine in it, and I have no intention of getting rid of it. This car is really impressive. I do love the BMW as well as the Mercedes and the Panamera, and they're all really close. And when it comes to making a decision on these cars, it's not just the price point, it's also your insurance rate. And then you have to look at if you're leasing it, which most people do, what's the residual value, what are you paying for, and all those numbers can be calculated by the dealer. So make sure to do your homework. And when you're buying a vehicle in this category, you might just not wanna look at your local Audi dealer, check online compare and compete and then go back to your local dealer and say, I would love to buy local. What can you do for me? See if they can make a deal. I don't always buy local, but I try to. It's good for the economy. But when you're looking at this vehicle in all 10 categories, there's a few misses, but nothing that really stands out. Nothing that throws a red flag or an orange flag in this case. But I really have always liked this four liter engine, especially with the twin turbos. They're using it in a lot of vehicles. The SQ8, of course, they're all tuned slightly differently. It's also in the RS6 Avant, which are now available here in the US. You're seeing it in the Cayenne. You're seeing it in the Urus. These are all, which we've reviewed as well. All these manufacturers are using this engine because they're part of the same family, that Volkswagen Group family. That is a good thing. That technology is being shared across the family lines, which means they're getting a lot of technology, which gives you all of that sorted out when you get into a vehicle like this. When you take all 10 categories and you put them together, this 2021 Audi RS7 in all categories earns a 90. That's pretty impressive and it fits right in there with the competing vehicles. Although there's a few shortfalls in some areas, I can't say anything really negative. Nothing stands out as a red flag or an orange flag in this case, but the vehicle really does perform and it is a huge improvement over its previous version. However, that wasn't a bad car either and everyone that has them doesn't want to get rid of them and there's a reason for that. These cars perform in so many different categories that you typically don't want to get rid of it. Keep in mind, most of these vehicles are leased. So if you're thinking about leasing a vehicle like this, make sure to check with a bunch of different dealers, including your local dealer, and then go back once you've got all your numbers together, back to your dealer and check out the best price you can get, whether you're leasing or buying. Check with your insurance agent. You might find a difference when it comes to how much it costs to insure one of these vehicles. Again, each category is different and there's a lot of variables and we have done a video on how to get the best price for insurance and you can check that out up here. If you got value from this video, make sure to give it a like and a share and share it with your friends. 
put your comments down below. If I didn't cover something that you want to know, put it down in the comments. I will get you an answer because I believe if you have a question, you deserve an answer. There are more excellent Car Smarts tips on our website, Car Coach Reports. We do have some new contributors, both in English and in Spanish. And also, if you haven't had a chance to check out our podcast, Total Car Scores with Carl Brower and Javier Mocha, we're having a lot of fun. We're all three North American Car and Truck of the Year jurors, and we have a great time interviewing some important people. But we don't just talk about the cars. We talk about the experience of owning a vehicle, and not just this one, but a lot of other great vehicles. Don't forget to follow me on all forms of social media. I'm always putting up some cool stuff at Lauren Fix. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for your support and watching.